Hello, my name is Casey Clayton, a cloud platform specialist with Informatica, and I'm here to talk about Informatica cloud application integration. This is part two of our CAI community demonstration, Salesforce Quick Start, and we're here to build a sample web service process API using your Salesforce app connection. So our process sample is going to be to create what we're calling the Salesforce account revenue service. And like any good service, it's going to have some inputs. In this case, this in-account phone, we're actually going to use to find and identify a particular record within Salesforce. And then in new revenue is actually going to be the value that we're going to be updating the annual revenue field on the Salesforce account to. And so how are we going to do this? We're going to design a process. The process is going to accept these input parameters. It's going to query for the Salesforce record. It's going to grab the current uh, annual revenue value and assign it to an output. We're going to go ahead and update the value in Salesforce, and then we're going to grab a few other fields from Salesforce to return with our output. So the end goal is to put together an output payload or a web service response that looks something like this, containing additional information about the account as well as what the previous revenue value was. So how do we get this accomplished? We're going to go within the Informatica cloud interface inside of the application integration module and we're going to go ahead and create a process. Uh, what we're looking at right now is actually a folder called Community Connections and it contains the primary Salesforce connection for cloud application integration that we have in this org. Uh, we're going to go back one step to our project CAI Community Samples. We're going to go into our folder called Salesforce Processes and within this empty folder we're going to go ahead and create our sample process. I'm going to hit the new button and it brings up the new asset menu. So what we're going to create here is a process, which is the end result of a lot of these other bits and pieces that you might be able to put together. By creating the process, we get taken to the process designer, which just like the screenshot that you saw at the beginning has a start and an end step. And it's going to be up to us to fill the middle spaces with the logic of the process to query for Salesforce, update Salesforce, and return the values that we need. So let's go ahead and set up some of the properties of this process. First of all, it's going to need a name. We're going to call this one the Salesforce Account Revenue Service. And then for its description, we're going to say this is a web service to find a Salesforce account using in-account phone and update it with the value from in-new revenue. Uh, we're also going to return a couple other values from the account as part of what we're doing here. Uh, so how is this process going to be initiated? So you define that in the start properties. Uh, by default, it's going to generate a web service, which means both a REST and a SOAP-based endpoint that can be called from uh, any external application. We do have the ability to trigger these same processes from different types of events. So it's not just web service calls, but something appearing in an Amazon S3 bucket or something showing up in Azure Service Bus, uh, SQS, SNS, uh, RabbitMQ, AMQP. Um, we can also listen to events that occur on files and in FTP locations. So you can design a process for a set of data once and process it in real time no matter which way that it's coming in. We're going to go ahead with a REST and a SOAP based service. We're going to say this is a public service, so we're going to allow anonymous access. And then we're saying this is going to be a cloud hosted service. So the Informatica produces the endpoint and we use your secure agent to get any back end data. This is a pure Salesforce process, so we'll keep it to run on the cloud server. So the input fields, uh, if you can recall, we had two input fields. Those were going to be the uh, in account phone. So we can go to in account phone and the in new revenue. So these are the two new values um, or one new value and one lookup value that we were going to use as part of this process. So to make things a little bit easier for us, we're going to set the type and we know this needs to be a number. And because at design time, we actually are aware of Salesforce field types and try to enforce strong typing, uh, selecting the appropriate field type of number here will make it easier when we're assigning the properties to the Salesforce record. Uh, we'll leave account phone as, as text for now. Um, our output fields. So there were a handful of output fields that actually we wanted to work with. The, the first one being just a message of whether or not it was a success or a failure. So we'll go ahead and call this one um, in out or out message, we'll call it uh, out message. Uh, the next full fields are going to be things that are actually going to be coming from the Salesforce account. So uh, we can go ahead and say this is the out account ID. 
This is going to be our out account name. This is going to be the account owner manager. So this is going to be an opportunity to explore our understanding of the relationships between records to go from the account to the owner to the owner's manager. And then so this is going to be account owner manager. This one here is going to be the out account revenue. And then we want to include a field also for the, uh, the previous revenue, the out old revenue. So let's go out old revenue. And we'll just set both of these to be number types. So we've defined our output fields, our input fields. And the last piece is going to be defining the field that represents the row that we want to work with within Salesforce. And so with a temporary field that we're going to just call my account, we're going to tell the system that this isn't just a standard text field. This is actually going to be an object. And more than that, it's going to be an object that actually pulls the information in from real time in Salesforce and allows us to update it. So we're going to select connection defined types in this drop down. We're going to go into our CAI community samples, community connections, and click Salesforce. At this point, we're presented with a list of objects that are available in that Salesforce org. We're going to select account, hit OK. And now we've defined the last field that we'll need for this process. I am going to go to advanced and turn the tracing level up to verbose just in case we need to see anything in the console. And then we can go ahead and shrink the properties and begin building the process. So after our start step, the first thing that we want to do is look into Salesforce to see if this record exists. And that recalls using an assignment step. The assignment not only allows us to query into various systems, it allows us to update the values within and perform formula, formulas and other functions uh, on the data. So we're going to call this one here query Salesforce account by phone. And within the assignment step, what we want to assign to is going to be my account. So if I hover over it, you can see here that it's a, a type Salesforce account, so we know it's a little bit special. If we select my account, we're going to get the option of assigning it with a query. So we know that we're headed down the right direction. If I take a peek down here and in my uh, query builder, if I hit add condition and I hit field name, I should see a list of all of my Salesforce fields available here, and I do. So the one that I want to match against is a Salesforce field account phone, and I want the one that equals the input value that I have. But where's my input value? Where's my in phone? Well, as I mentioned about the strong typing, account phone and phone is a specific type in Salesforce. So sometimes we do have to override the strong typing and this allows us to use our formula builder. We can go in here and all we need to do is select uh, the in account phone value. You know, if we need to do some concatenation or some manipulation, these sorts of functions are available here. But all we're trying to do with in account phone is populate this value. So there's input in account phone and you can see here that our query builder automatically constructed the Sokol query to get the information out of Salesforce. Well, now what? Well, now what depends on whether or not we found any data. So what we do within our processes is use a data decision. Data decisions can compare two values within a record, an old value and a new value, or can take you down various routes based on the billing state. But in this case, what we're going to be using it for is we're going to check to see if we got any data from our My Account query. So we'll find My Account. I'll select it here. And because this is an object, we're only given the two options, is set, is not set. So is not set, that's, that's our unhappy path. They sent us a phone number that didn't match to any records within Salesforce. So we're going to need to return them an error message at that time. And we're going to do that with another assignment step. We'll call this one return error message to caller. And then in our assignments, we're just going to use the out message text field here. We're going to say that this is going to be using this content and we'll say error phone not found. And then we'll include the actual phone number as part of this response. Just by clicking here, we can include any field. And so it's going to return this error for phone not found with the phone number as part of the out message. And so we don't need to do anything else with the unhappy path. This is going to just proceed on to the end. And anything that we assign to an output field is going to be returned to the caller when it hits the end step. Uh, 
Uh, now for our happy path, we're going to actually want to do a little bit more work. Uh, the first thing is we need to actually grab that value that's um, the current annual revenue and assign it to the output field that we want. So if we come in here and we say this is going to be assign annual revenue to output, I'll come here and select add field, my output field out account revenue. You can see its type is an output. I'm going to go select field and this is actually going to come from within our Salesforce record. So I got to open up my account. Now I don't see all the fields here. I only see the, the ones that are numbers. So right on the top of the list is annual revenue. So this is going to take the value from Salesforce annual revenue and put it into our output field. So the next step in our process is to actually update the revenue on the account record. So we'll go ahead and label this. Update revenue on account record. And now we're going to put Salesforce on the left hand side. It's something that we're going to assign to and specifically an individual field within my account. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the my account by clicking on this arrow. I'm going to go down and I'm going to try to find uh, account revenue or annual revenue. There's my field. Now I want this value to be populated using what I sent in from the input, the in new revenue. So that's all there is to it. I just need to do an assignment from a value to something that's part of a Salesforce connection object. And when we finish this step, it's going to make the update back in Salesforce. So the last piece is just to assign some output fields. So we'll just call this one um, remaining, remaining output or remaining account fields to output. And we'll do some assignments. Uh, I'm going to open this up a little bit. So the easiest one, of course, out message. We can go ahead and say this is success. Um, the next couple fields that we want to add, like out account ID, out account name, out account owner manager, out account revenue, we're going to need to assign these from Salesforce fields. So out account ID, easy enough. It's going to come from a field. It's going to come from my account. And we can say account ID. Now, if we had a requirement, this actually include the string ID colon and then the ID number, we can handle that easily enough. We can come here and say, this is actually going to be content, and I'd like you to join together ID colon, the space, and then the value from my account called account ID. Now the out account name we'll just take directly as a field mapping from my account. We're going to say account name. Now account owner manager is going to be mapped from a field, but it's actually not a field that exists on the account record that we've connected to. We're going to have to go into my account and then we're going to use the account owner or rather their owner ID to go to the user record. And then from this particular user's record, we actually need to go to their manager ID. And this is the full name that we're going to send back as part of our response. So without creating formula fields, we're able to reach up several layers using our knowledge of the Salesforce relationships. Uh, last but not least is the new account revenue that we set just to show that we're actually pulling it from the account record. So I'm going to go into my account. I'm going to select annual revenue. So at this point, we have declared all the output fields for our process. I'm going to save. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to check my validation. We see that the process is valid. So the last step is to go ahead and publish the process. Well, now that the service is published, what does that mean? It means we actually have a functioning web service API that we could go ahead and invoke from a web client or other means of checking out any web service. So what we'd like to do is get the endpoint for this particular process. And you do that by going here into properties detail, or you could go back from the explorer and get into the properties detail here. But what you're looking for is the service URL. This is the endpoint that we have for our REST service. If you're going to invoke it via SOAP, you could use this URL, and there's the appropriate WSDL. But we're going to go ahead and copy this URL, and then we're going to just fire up our Postman client to test out our service. So here's a, a blank request. Uh, authorization is no auth. The content type is application JSON. And then within the body, I've just got the uh, account phone number here. Uh, because we're going to be working with a Salesforce record, we want to make sure that we know what we see. So this is the record within Salesforce. Uh, there's their phone number. You can see their current annual revenue is a million dollars. 
So this is what we're going to try to update. Our phone number is in there. Our new revenue is going to be $5 million. So we've really increased the value of this particular account to our company and we'd like to update our system accordingly. So we've placed in that information. We're going to paste our URL that we pulled out of uh, Informatica Cloud Application Integration and put it here and then just go ahead and hit send. So in that amount of time, what it's done is it's actually reached out to Salesforce, identified the record, grabbed the previous account revenue, made the update, and then returned the values back to the caller. So you can see here that we actually have a successful response. So that's the entirety of the end-to-end -end of our demonstration. You can see that what we've accomplished here is actually to create uh, our account revenue service that took in these input values ran through the steps the business required and also returned an output payload to the caller. So thank you very much for your time and we hope to talk to you again.